We'll now introduce our next innovative product, Moleculite DX. The Moleculite DX is a handheld imaging device that uses a safe violet light to help wound care professionals detect bacteria in a wound and measure the size of the wound. Speaking on his experience with Moleculite and how it is changing his clinical practice is Dr. Charles A. Anderson, Medical Director of the Wound Care Clinic and Limb Salvage Program at Madigan Army Medical Center in Tacoma, Washington. Interviewing Dr. Anderson will be Dr. Monique Y. Rennie, Vice President of Medical Affairs and Reimbursement at Moleculite. Thank you for being here, Dr. Anderson, to talk today about Moleculite, and thank you to Wound Management and Prevention for choosing of Moleculite's portable imaging devices as one of the top innovations of 2022 for their point of care detection of high bacterial loads and wounds and for performing accurate wound measurement. First, we're going to start with a quick disclaimer from Dr. Anderson uh, that the information included in this presentation is for general information only. Uh, and opinions expressed in the presentation are of the author and not of the U.S. Army. So Dr. Anderson, I'd like to start with a question for you. How has Moleculite been an innovative addition to your practice and, and what hurdles are you trying to overcome by using this technology? Thank you, Monique. Well, this first slide is very important. What it illustrates is that when bacteria reach a level of 10 to the fourth, they have a negative impact on healing. That's been uh, uh, demonstrated in multiple presentation and studies. It also sets the stage when you get to that level of bacteria that those bacteria can then continue to multiply and lead to serious infection, infectious complications and even complications uh, uh, like an amputation. The problem is trying to detect that level of bacteria using clinical criteria alone is, is in, ineffective, inaccurate. Between uh, 50 and 85% of the time, those bacteria are not detected by clinical uh, exam alone. So for us, the, the fluorescent imaging of bacteria has, has become a game changer. We use it in our outpatient clinic and we uh, scan essentially every patient that uh, goes through the uh, clinic. Uh, just to illustrate how we use it in the clinic, uh, when we're, uh, after we complete a clinical assessment, which is still very important, then we'll go ahead and scan the patient. If the scan is negative, that's also very important information that can guide us on the type of dressings that uh, we utilize, for example. Uh, there, there's a very important study uh, out of Britain that, uh, that addresses uh, the value of that, including the, the uh, negative. Uh, what they found in uh, over 200 patients that uh, uh, by using the, the scanning for bacteria, that decreased the usage of uh, antibacterial dressings by 49%, decreased the antibiotic use by 33%, but improved the healing rate by uh, uh, 23%, and we've had uh, the same type of experience. Once we uh, scan a patient, if the scan is positive, then our first approach is to cleanse that wound. The fluorescent imaging uh, guides you in the cleansing, uh, both from the standpoint of degree of cleansing and the cleansing agent that you use, so that uh, by using the, the scanning as you're cleaning, you can make sure that you have uh, uh, cleanse that wound and gotten rid of the, the uh, bacterial load. If there's bacteria in the wound, then we'll proceed with the debridement, and it's a guided debridement. We can see the bacteria and we know uh, what we're removing, and we can rescan and make sure that, again, we've uh, cleared that wound of bacteria. If there's remaining bacteria in the wound, again, that helps us in our selection of uh, antibacterial ointments or dressings. Uh, if there's extension into the dermis, that's a, a different entity that we'll address uh, a little later, and we refer to that as wound-related cellulitis. Uh, in, a, in addition to addressing the wound, it's very important that uh, we, we now look at uh, surgical incisions that are referred to the wound care clinic. 
uh, recently published a, a paper again showing the unexpected high incidence of bacteria in the wounds that are sent to a wound care clinic. And that allows you to address that uh, uh, before that becomes a serious uh, wound infection. The other area that's extremely important is wound bed preparation. Prior to, we work very closely with plastic surgery, prior to doing any kind of a flap or split thickness skin graft or even biologic tissue, we make sure that that uh, wound bed is free of bacteria. Uh, to put uh, a, a skin flap and split thickness skin graft or biologic tissue on a wound that's colonized, uh, you set the stage for uh, uh, that to fail. We've also started, uh, once we scan the wound, to, to scan the surrounding area. It's uh, amazing what you'll pick up in diabetic patients. We've uh, uh, recently reported the incidence of bacteria between the toes, uh, which is important finding and helps educate the diabetic patients. We also scan dressings and fluids. And again, I found that useful in identifying bacteria that we may not see in the wound. Monique, you're the expert of the science behind this. Can you tell us about the science for that is behind the scanning? Certainly, and thank you for that great clinical overview. So when we get into the nitty gritty of how it works, you can see on this image here, a fluorescence imaging being captured in the dark. Um, this is using safe, visible violet light. It's not ultraviolet, it's violet light, so it's entirely safe. It's done at the point of care, and you're trying to detect elevated bacterial loads in the wound as Dr. Anderson described. You can see that the device is portable, it's handheld, it has a touch screen. It doesn't use any patient contact or any contrast agents. Uh, it does have a reimbursement pathway and it has multiple FDA clearances as well as CE marking, Health Canada approval and numerous other jurisdictions. So in terms of how it actually works, it creates a map of the clinically relevant bacterial loads in and around a wound. And it does that by taking advantage of some of the fluorescence properties that bacteria naturally produce. And so here, if we look at this standard image, which is actually one of Dr. Anderson's patients, and I'm going to show you now the fluorescence image, the background tissue appears green on the skin. This is just from collagens, matrix components. Um, but anywhere that you see that red color, you're looking at elevated bacterial levels. This is greater than 10 to the four colony forming units, which is that level where wound healing starts to be impaired. And this red includes most bacterial species, including gram positives, gram negatives, aerobes and anaerobes. And it's because of part of their heme pathway, uh, something fluorescent called porphyrins. Now I do want to mention that in addition to the bacterial detection uh, of elevated bacterial loads um, capability, the, the device also has digital wound measurement and it also tracks wound area over time. It measures the surface area length and width with 95% accuracy. And this is essential documentation for you to have to monitor that wound size over time. But in addition to the wound size over time, now you can also monitor the bacterial burden over time. And you see on the wound here, anywhere that's red is indicative of that elevated uh, bacterial load of higher than 10 to the four colony, colony forming units per gram. Monique, can you talk a little bit about Pseudomonas uh, and the detection of Pseudomonas with this the device? Yes, that's a great question. So I mentioned that most bacterial species fluoresce red. Pseudomonas is very unique. I know it's unique clinically in its presentation as well, but it's also unique in how it presents on the images. So here are some examples of Pseudomonas. It uniquely produces a cyan color that usually has a glowing white center. Uh, so you can see here an image of debridement on the right, and that hot white that you see, this is all pseudomonas around the wound. Um, and this is a nice example of doing debridement under fluorescence, so you can immediately see um, the feedback on what's being removed, and, and I think just as important of what's remaining in that particular uh, tissue. And then on the left, you can see another example of pseudomonas where it's actually been picked up on a curette and you can see it fluorescing. So when clinicians see that, 
particular color, they can know that pseudomonas is in a wound. And this is coming from a virulence factor it produces called pyuverdin. That's different than the virulence factor that uh, clinicians often see on the dressings that creates that greenish tinge. It's a distinct uh, virulence factor that creates this fluorescence. Um, Dr. Anderson, have you noticed uh, clinically that there's many wounds that fluoresce cyan on the imaging that don't have those hallmark uh, pseudomonas signals on clinical presentation? Absolutely. Just like other uh, bacterial burden where you're, you're trying to pick that up clinically. If you rely on trying to pick up pseudos, pseudomonas by seeing that typical green uh, color that we see in wounds, Unfortunately, you miss the majority of early uh, bacterial load with pseudomonas. So, again, very important to, to pick up with the uh, scan and a very unique finding with the uh, fluorescence. Excellent. So, Dr. Anderson, I'd like to highlight uh, for those watching uh, a study that you recently did on wound a wound-associated cellulitis. Can you tell us a bit about how uh, your wound assessment and treatment has changed uh, around that uh, finding? Uh, yes, thank you, Monique. So what we found in uh, evaluating our patients is there's a subset of patients, and this is an illustration, that uh, when you finish cleaning that wound and debriding that wound, there's still residual fluorescence extending into the dermis. So this is early cellulitis, and we've labeled this uh, wound-related cellulitis. So we did a study. We looked at, at uh, 236 patients, uh, and 15 of those uh, or 16 of those patients had wound-related cellulitis. This is important because it, if you identify this early, and typically we'll give these patients a short course of antibiotics, it'll clear that cellulitis cellulitis again before you progress on to a significant cellulitis that requires uh, IV antibiotics or hospital admission. In our series uh, that we had, uh, none of those patients went on to require either IV antibiotics or uh, hospitalization, and all of that cellulitis uh, was cleared and the wounds uh, progressed on to healing. So exciting to hear about these things coming out of the coming out of the field that that even surpass the expectations that we had for for the device. And many of these have come out, like your study on wound associated cellulitis, uh, just in the past year. So let's turn to the impact that this uh, technology has had, and 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 the treatment changes that result from the imaging information have had on outcomes. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that there's a randomized control trial that's, that's just come out uh, in publication on diabetic foot ulcers. But Dr. Anderson, uh, I understand you've been studying pressure injury outcomes, and I, we'd be very interested to hear about what you found. Thank you, Monique. We were very surprised at what we found with scanning of pressure injuries. In, in this review, 94% of our patients scanned uh, with pressure injuries had evidence of bacteria. By early identification and treatment of this bacteria with cleansing, debridement, on occasion, a short course of antibiotics, none of these patients progressed on to uh, requiring IV antibiotics. None of the patients uh, uh, required hospitalization, and these patients uh, went on to uh, heal uh, or, in, or are in the uh, pathway for healing. So excellent outcomes, again, early identification, early treating, preventing major complications in uh, pressure injuries. It's wonderful to hear the, these um, consistent threads that go through uh, proactive wound care, a more judicious antibiotic usage. Uh, very exciting. And I thank you for sharing all that. Um, I do see we're near the end of our time. So um, I would just ask you any prediction that you would make about this technology going forward in terms of adoption? Uh, very simple. I think this is the standard, new standard of care for uh, management of chronic wounds. And I see this uh, setting a, a new standard and becoming uniform in wound care clinics. Thank you, Dr. Anderson and Dr. Rennie. We will now open the floor to questions. 
Our first question from the audience is, how does Moleculite fit into your clinical workflow? So as I mentioned, uh, it has now become a, a standard. So uh, essentially every chronic wound that we see in our wound care clinic is scanned. Uh, it becomes a, a, a critical part of the flow and adds very little time uh, to management of these patients. And, and uh, as we've demonstrated, uh, uh, using this uh, in the majority of patients, uh, uh, we see or identify bacteria and it, uh, it changes the management of these wounds. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. Our next question is, is there reimbursement for molecular? I'm gonna let Monique answer that question. Happy to. Uh, so we get this question frequently. Yes, there are reimbursement codes for this procedure. They are 0598T and 0599T uh, for real-time uh, wound fluorescence imaging of bacterial presence, location, and load. These, uh, you can look these up on uh, fee schedules, for example, uh, at your local uh, MAX uh, for what the uh, payment on the physician side would be. Um, and there is also an APC assignment for uh, facility payment in hospital allocation and ambulatory service. Thank you, Dr. Rennie. And our last question for now is, I work in multiple care setting, both long-term care facilities and an outpatient wound clinic. Can the moleculite be used in all of these settings and can it be moved? Yes, it can be used in uh, all of the settings. A very interesting study that we're now working on. Not only can it be used for all kinds of wounds, but it's not affected by uh, skin pigmentation. And that's very, very important that uh, this uh, is very portable. It can be moved from clinic to clinic. It can be taken to outpatient clinics. We use it in the inpatient ward. So it, it's handheld and very easy to uh, use on any type of wound in any setting, in any patient. And I'll just comment from a reimbursement perspective that in addition to being able to be portable and, and used in those diverse sites of service, it can also be built uh, from um, most sites of service where wound care uh, is performed. And that does include skilled nursing facilities. So it is excluded from, uh, from consolidated building in a skilled nursing facility. Thank you, Dr. Anderson and Dr. Rennie for this presentation.